On January 4th, 1976, the powerful Oakland Raiders and Pittsburgh Steelers again met for the American Football Conference Championship. This title game, matching the two best teams in professional football, would be the toughest playoff test under the worst possible conditions. Two feared and respected football giants hunted and hit, fought win weathering each other for 60 full furious minutes. Two champions entered the cold confines of Three Rivers Stadium. Two truly magnificent champions would leave the dark frozen battlefield three long hours later. But only one destined for the Super Bowl and World Championship. Number 32 safety Jack Tatum and number 58 linebacker Monty Johnson made key plays, but the Raiders trailed in the fourth quarter. Defying the elements, the odds, and the tough steel of defense, the Raiders stormed goalward. After Mike Ciani's score, Pittsburgh came back, and the icy carpet again spelled trouble. Trailing 16 to 7 with time almost gone, skillful Raider coach John Madden electrified fans, press, and Steelers alike with innovative strategy. Needing 10 to win, he had George Blanda quickly go for three. The long kick was good, and with only seven seconds remaining, the Raiders continued their heroic efforts. But it was not to be. The final words on this fiercest football battle in years were indelibly etched on the scoreboard. Suddenly, disappointingly, another memorable year of glory ended in a single day of defeat. But despite pain and heartbreak, these 1975 Oakland Raiders had added much to the organization's already unrivaled record of accomplishment with this year of triumph and tragedy. The new season opened on a Monday night in Miami with a classic cross-country challenge, a renewal of the unforgettable 1974 playoff. This is a classic playoff game, just like the Miami-Kansas City game on Christmas Day. It is a classic. Three years ago. No question, these are two of the very finest football teams we have this year, and they're putting on a great show. There he is, fading, looking, looking, looking. He's under the gun. He's caught, he throws. It is. But this was 1975, the Orange Bowl, with the mighty Raiders determined to again establish mastery by snapping Miami's 31-game home win streak. With number 30, Mark Van Egan, and number 40, Pete Banaszak leading the charge, the silver and black crashed the end zone for 31 points. Tony Klein, number 84, added a sack to Bob Greasy's four interceptions. Then, Raider Radio's Bill King described the play that sealed the pulsating 31-21 win. All right, Griff's back, takes it a yard into the end zone, hesitates, he's out, now he's got to run, he didn't want to, he gets a lane up the middle, it's 20, 25, he's got room at the 30, the 40, the 50, they may not catch him. He's got a convoy to the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown Raiders! Harold Hart, 101 yards! Holy Toledo! In Baltimore, the Raiders face the playoff-bound Colts. Number 80, Art Toms, led a defensive line thinned by a season-ending injury to Kelvin Corva in corralling Colt passers six times. Behind explosive blocking by offensive captain Gene Upshaw, the Raiders scored on the ground. 
showcasing three proven wide receivers, Mike Ciani, Fred Belitnikoff, and Cliff Branch, the Raiders' precision passing then overpowered Baltimore. Down by big tight end Dave Casper, number 87, helped Oakland rack up 31 points. Meanwhile, Colt hopes were shattered on plays like this by rookie cornerback Neil Colsey, another product of astute Raider drafting. In the end, Baltimore was stymied, awed by Oakland design, desire, and depth. In San Diego, the charges were held to just five first downs by the likes of aggressive Otis Sistrunk, number 60. Ray Guy, again the NFL's leading punter, deftly kept the charges down deep all afternoon. With quarterbacks Ken Stabler and Larry Lawrence hobbled and Belitnikoff, Hubbard and others sidelined, the offense relied on George Blander's field goals for a 6-0 victory. In week four in Kansas City, the hard-handed Chiefs pranced for 42 points. Meanwhile, with rookie quarterback David Hum seeing his first league action, the Raiders gained as many yards as the Chiefs. But with only one touchdown, the Silver and Black suffered their first loss of 1975, 42 to 10. In rainy Cincinnati, the weary Raiders were on the road for the seventh consecutive weekend. Defense owned the day, and alert linebacker Phil Villapiano owned one of four Raider interceptions. But the Bengals brought one back all the way to squeak out a 14 to 10 victory. Finally, the Raiders were home. With San Diego in town, the Oakland defense raced out bound for glory. This would be the very first time that the Raiders ever registered two shutouts in one season. It began when number 54, Mike Dennery, and number 83, Ted Hendricks, trapped the charge of punter for a safety. Next, it was Hendricks, Sistrunk, and Horace Jones adding another two-pointer. The spirited Raiders were on their way. Then, dazzling deception as Ray Guy found number 33, Lewis Carter, on a punt formation pass. Finally, behind blocking by John Vella, Upshaw, Shell, Beeler, and Dalby, Ken Stabler triggered the feared Raider bomb to number 21, Cliff Branch, as Oakland celebrated homecoming 25 to nothing. In week seven in Denver, Loyal Raider boosters saw their conference leading defense cut down the Broncos. With sturdy center Dave Dalby, number 50, offering protection, Stabler hit number 25, Fred Belitnikoff, for six of Oakland's amazing 35 second half points. Neil Colsey returned three punts for 127 yards, en route to an all-time NFL record 655 yards in that category. Raider depth again overcame a wave of injuries as Marv Hubbard polished off a towering 42-17 conquest. When the Saints came marching in, in week eight, they ran into a poised Raider offense, primed for points. With number 28, Clarence Davis, powering for tough yards, the silver and black poured over, around, and through the shock Saints.
where the offense flew on winged feet, the defense contributed menace and mayhem. Relentless pressure on Saints quarterback Archie Manning forced this breakdown, which reliable George Atkinson, number 43, hustled back the other way. Versatile special teams captain Warren Bankston, number 46, scored his first Raider touchdown as one of nine different receivers who contributed to a spectacular 523 yards total offense. The afternoon's two big strikes went to deep threat Morris Bradshaw, number 81, as a sellout home crowd cheered a club record 34 first downs and a devastating 48 to 10 Raider triumph. When the Cleveland Browns visited the majestic Oakland Coliseum, they found Clarence Davis on the run. He slashed for 64 yards on the opening kickoff and added 120 yards rushing to help set up scores like this one detailed by Bill King. Branch slots left inside Fred. Double wing puts Davis on the right. Stabler back. Looking, looking, going to Branch. Wide open. Touchdown Raiders! Branch committed highway robbery without a gun. Clarence Scott was left flat-footed. Branch hit it as if to make a post pattern and then broke right back out, and Scott could not stay with him at all. Cliff had six yards to spare in the end zone, and Stabler didn't miss. When Stabler wasn't hitting passes, Horace Jones, number 82, was hitting runners. In the air, the Browns met disaster against defensive captain Willie Brown, number 24. Then the Raiders thundered to victory. Now Stabler has Davis back in the backfield with Branch left, Boletnikoff right. Back, Stabler pumps to the left, comes back to the right, throwing to Boletnikoff. Super catch! Touchdown, Raiders! Here's the inside handoff now and a reverse, carrying the ball as Davis from left to right. He's down to the 20, cuts back to 15, the 10, the 5, and the touchdown after breaking a tackle. Oakland 38, Cleveland 17. Next on the schedule, a first trip to our nation's capital to face the Washington Redskins. The huge national audience knew about the pride and poise, drama and excitement that are Raider traditions. They saw Oakland roar back like a mighty train. Hubbard is out. Banizak is in, turning the left side, up Char, good block, down to the 20, the 15, the 10, riding a man, but he goes all the way to the end zone, touchdown Raiders! And the Raiders have turned the complexion of this game back into a silver and black aura. They crowd five men up front now, almost six, and jam the middle linebacker right over the line, and Hubbard rushes away from one tackler and then goes ahead upfield, rumbling to the 40, breaks out to the 50, a foot race to the 40, to the 30, three men after him, and a clubbing tackle at the 18-yard line, and a flag goes down, down goes another flag, and the Raiders may get the benefit of these calls. The longest run of the season for an Oakland Raider, and flags were falling like a snowstorm of yellow. While flags were falling, so were Redskin defenders. With little time left, Oakland led 23-16. However, a last-ditch Washington effort tied the score at 23 and put the Raiders into the first overtime game in their remarkable 16-year history. When the Redskins won the toss, the Raider defense responded to pressure and overwhelmed quarterback Bill Kilmer's attack. With confidence born of talent, discipline and preparation, the Raiders marched goalward. Finally, it was time for ageless marble George Blander and the field goal team to clinch the Raiders' momentous 26-23 triumph, ensuring an 11th consecutive winning season for the Silver and Black. 
In week 11, a Raider victory against Atlanta would mean an unprecedented 8th division championship in nine years. Now it's a double wing. Branch slotted left inside Boletnikov. Stabler drops straight back. Good protection. Throwing deep. Branch got his man beaten. Touchdown, Raiders! Bartkowski play faking. First and 10. Back to pass. Delivers a wobbler. Overthrown. Intercepted. Skip Thomas at the 40. Strikes right. Comes back to the left. Puts up a wall of boxers at the 50. Cuts back toward the middle of the field at the 40. He is running laterally. Sidesteps another tackle at the 35. Down the right side of the 25. He's at the 15, and he goes out of bounds as a pile of Atlanta Falcons finally drove him out. Skip Thomas on a dazzling dipsy do return. Five men jammed in. Back he goes, sets up quickly, looks right, looks left, can't find anybody. Comes out running. Little toss to Branch. Touchdown, Raiders! Here's the pass on a screen to Van Egan at the 20. He's got a wall to the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Raiders! Despite Oakland's deluge of points, Steve Bartkowski brought Atlanta to the front 34 to 31. With just six seconds left, a blander field goal tied the game. And this time, even the extra period was a heart shaker. Here comes a three-man rush. Stabler back. He looks. He fires to Branch. Comeback catch, but he can't get out of bounds. He jukes a man and does get out on the 19-yard line with two seconds to go. I can't believe it. Branch made a 360-degree turn in front of Brazina, who had hit him, but he did not go down. Oh, it took some guts that time. At the 19, the line of scrimmage, it'll be about a 36-yard field goal. Snap, spot, kick on the way! Good! And George Blanda is still the people's curse at the Oakland Coliseum. George Blanda from 36 yards has cut the Oakland Raiders for the second consecutive week in an overtime victory. The final score in the overtime, Oakland 37, Atlanta 34. Next, a Monday night TV audience of the Oakland Raiders, reigning AFC Western Division champions, go for seven wins in a row. The defense was superb, as second effort had become first nature. Rookie Charlie Phillips, number 47, started for injured Jack Tatum and grabbed a record tying three interceptions. Ken Stabler guided the offense for two scores and an impressive 17 to 10 win. The Raider record now stood at 10 and two. In the season's 13th week, the rejuvenated Houston Oilers were in Oakland for a game that was fiercely contested. With impenetrable protection from Art Shell, Henry Lawrence in number 64, George Beeler, left-handers Ken Stabler and David Hum drilled the Oilers for 26 points and a narrow Raider lead. But the Oilers rallied and threatened to go ahead. Raider victory seemed assured when Skip Thomas intercepted in the end zone. But a phantom call away from the ball nullified the theft. And Houston went on to win a squeaker in the last seconds, 27 to 26. In the season's final week, top rusher and scorer Pete Banaszak won the coveted Gorman Award as most inspirational Raider. Pete then scored three touchdowns against the Chiefs bringing his season's total to a club record 16. Tight end Bob Moore, number 88, caught this one of Ken Stabler's game record 11 pass completions in 12 attempts. George Blanda then became the only player in pro history to score 2,000 points. Near game's end, number 35, Jess Phillips galloped 66 yards to help capture coach John Madden's 70th win in seven Raider seasons.
A defense led by Villapiano, Toms, Gerald Irons, and Horace Jones scalped the Chiefs 28 to 20 for win number 11. Ahead lay the AFC playoffs and the Cincinnati Bengals. There was no doubt that the proud Oakland Raiders were ready. Ladies and gentlemen, the Raider defense. And in, number 84, Tony Klein from Miami of Florida. At tackle, number 60, Otis Sistrum. And middle linebacker, Honey Johnson, University of Nebraska. Can you see by the dawn's early light? As Paul Brown coached his final game, he saw his Bengals overshadowed by an aggressive band of hunters in silver and black. Offense took over, Stabler followed Coach Madden's game plan and went right for the jugular. Mike Ciani's touchdown was only the beginning as the classy Raiders dominated and demolished, scoring time after time. Behind pure power blocking, Raider supremacy was apparent as they swept on like a gathering storm. was virtually caged when Dave Casper scored the last of Oakland's 31 points. The Bengals closed to 28, but the rugged Raider defense met the challenge and brought down the curtain. Watch a pick, a pick, a pick! In 1975, the Raider organization maintained its total commitment to excellence, winning 12 in league and postseason play. In terms of consistent victory, the Raiders continued their complete domination of professional football since 1963, when owner-managing general partner Al Davis rescued a faltering franchise and pledged to build sport's most successful organization. Since 1967, when Oakland won the first of eight division championships, the record is incredible. A triumph of courage and conviction, of dedicated people who seek no shortcuts, avoid no challenges. Men like team captains Brown, Bankston, and Upshaw. Players Henry Lawrence, Steve Sylvester, Willie Hall, 
Ted Qualick, Dan Medlin, Dave Rowe, general partner Ed McGow, coaches Oliver Spencer, Tom Doms, Tom Flores, Bob Zeman, Don Schenick, Joe Scanella, trainer George Anderson, equipment director Richard Romansky, and more. Now, only a world championship remains to crown this awesome record of achievement, to add the ultimate triumph for professional football's winningest team, the Oakland Raiders.